Hey, what's up, guys? It's your boy, The Feist, back at it with another video. But before we get this started, guys, if it's your first time here, definitely be sure to hit, 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 hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. Come join us on Discord. It's the best community ever. You will not regret it, guys. Come follow us on Twitch, all that good stuff. If you wanted to support the content because we don't have YouTube monetization, definitely be sure to check out the description below. We have an Etsy link, which we have some merchandise, so you guys would get something cool out of it and also support the channel. And we have a Patreon link if you wanted to do some type of donation and stuff. But let's get into the content, guys, because I know that's what you're interested in. So what we're going to be doing today is a Bellinor guide. Guys, I've been getting this uh, this question a lot because uh, people have been asking, like, yo, can you do a Bellinor guide? I know a lot of people don't have Bellinor, so there isn't too much of a Bellinor guide out there. But I definitely wanted to start doing one because I've been using him oh my god since like the beginning and i absolutely love them this is going to be more of a pve oriented type uh guide so i'm going to shift my camera kind of to the center i really love how this character looks uh this character looks absolutely awesome so let me shift the camera really quick so you guys can actually see what's going on here in regards to his stats actually let me put myself a little at the bottom because it's i don't know for some reason I'm OCD where I want to see the person's face, or I know you guys probably want to see the character's face versus just looking at his nut crack. We're not trying to do that type of stuff right here, but let's get into it, guys. So, um, my build is more of, because I'll tell you right off the bat, guys, he is my clan boss lead right now with a 24% crit. It's absolutely amazing. It's really good, especially when you want to kind of have uh, a lot of people that just do crit damage to kind of... Go, go a little more crazier with their damage output. So I am using him for Clan Boss. So if, if you see Lifesteal gear here, that's the reason why. It really helps with PvE and we'll kind of get into the specifics of that. So the first thing I want to emphasize in regards to Bellinor to kind of tell you guys before we start looking at all these stats here is the thing that you want to really emphasize with him is crit damage because... Crit damage is where he is going to need the most stuff to do more damage output because you're not going to need that much crit rate. If we take a look at his skill sets just to kind of go over here, specifically his aura. His aura already increases ally crit rate in all battles by 24%. So you don't have to worry about 24% crit here. So that's basically with the 15% crit, add 24 to that. What is that? That's uh, 39 so that's 39 he has right off the bat as a baseline. So that's pretty awesome. So then we go over here and we see his A1. His A1 attacks one enemy, places a 30% increased crit rate buff on all allies for one turn if this attack is critical. So with the crit lead and also with this A1, he basically gets, if you add this together, he gets 54% crit. 54% crit plus 15, that's 69. I don't know. My math could be weird, but you guys get the point of what I'm saying here. So his crit rate doesn't have to be too high. So the idea is he's going to be covered by a decent amount of crit. So you don't have to worry when it comes to gloves, which we usually do crit rate. We don't have to worry about crit rate as the main stat. We can just worry about crit damage and what we would do as a substat for all these other items will be crit rate and that will be enough for him to compensate on getting over so he can on uh, honestly just keep continuing to get that crit rate buff over and over every time he does it because basically once he attacks that one time it's kind of a perpetual motion kind of thing where he always is going to buff himself with the crit rate continuously so it's something you don't need to worry about anymore it's just the first shot that it's going to take a bit um the other thing is also if you did have someone else on the team like i have scar torsis that does do the crit rate buff then that kind of just puts you over the hill and it doesn't matter um and basically bellinor will just keep doing the thing and scar torsis will also get him over there of course that's double overlapping on uh C on you know buffs but it's one of those things uh, i will replace scar torsis eventually uh on my clan boss to put someone a little much more you know maybe a counterattack character something that will really help us but that's a different story because right now we're doing the bellinor guide so the thing i wanted to emphasize is specifically with him right now the thing you want to care about is crit damage because crit rate you don't really need too much when it comes to him because he's going to have himself covered because of his stuff especially if you put him as a lead skill so now let's start talking about these artifacts one by one what i tried to do here 
is honestly, if I was able to go, I would go for the, um, not the offense set, but the other one, the cruel set. Let's see. We're going to scroll down, which is the 15% and 5% ignore armor. Uh, that, you know, that is a really good option. Like you could really go around those. Uh, I really do love this type of set. You can also do the crit damage set if you did have a good piece for that. Anything that basically emphasizes damage alpha for him is just really good. Uh, I, I've seen a lot of people to make him tanky. Uh, one of the people that chill out with us on the stream actually said he, uh, I think it was Dude Fluff. He, shout out to my boy Dude Fluff, always coming through on the streams. He said that he started putting his Bellinor in stalwart gear. I do this because obviously I'm doing clan boss and other dungeon runs and stuff like that. But uh, this, is, this is something interesting. I haven't messed with this. But for me on my guide, I would specifically say like I went straight hardcore damage output. He does have good defense. So you can make him a little bit tanky. Like being the fact that he's at a thousand defense is really good. His 1520 attack is incredible. His speed being 105, incredible. Like that is so crazy. His crit damage being 63%, amazing. He has accuracy and he also has uh, some resist, which is cool. So the fact that he has accuracy is cool. So I do really like like just his baseline stats they're really amazing uh his hp very kind of low not great i've seen lower so i'm not stressing too much but it's like the defense kind of does help with that you know what i mean so now what i went for was a lot of things that had accuracy because here's the thing he's going to be doing debuffs so you need to have decent amount of accuracy i did also try to go for some speed and i went for attack percentage crit rate was something that i was looking for as well so we're going to start going in this case i had accuracy was which, which is just legit i did have attack two rolls 16 percent, and we had speed i can't really deny this piece this piece is really nice so then we went to uh our lifesteal helm set we did have crit damage 12 percent, awesome uh hit right there uh then we have speed we had crit rate 7% to kind of help us get a little higher on that, which is really good. And then we had attack, which this flat rate is whatever at this point. But all these other three things that we got made it really nice. And it was a six-star helm, so I can't deny this piece either. Now, we went to the legendary set here for the offense, and we had crit rate 15%, really good to kind of add the little crit that we do need for this. Then we had some resistance. Which, I mean, resistance is a good thing, but it's one of those things that if you had someone that kind of cleansed him, it's not too bad. And because we're kind of doing essentially like PvE for the most part with him, I did mess with him in Arena, but I don't anymore because we're kind of in the higher levels and I have a tanky team. Which if you've seen us on stream, you've seen that the team that we do is Skartorsis, Miscreated Monster, Madame Ceres, and Tormund. Uh, because there is a torment craze right now. And that composition is working really well for me. Uh, definitely, I think if you check out the Madame Ceres video, you'll see the composition. We did a few arena matches with that. She's absolutely amazing. And you get to see why I'm doing that composition. And then, so continuing, we have good crit rate. We have good crit damage. And we have good accuracy. The resistance, like I said before, not really emphasizing this too much. But, I mean, if you did have it, it's, it is what it is. If I would emphasize the things that you're going to want to care about especially when you're trying to pump damage output it's going to be attack because he's a sniper character he's someone that can take someone out in one shot uh basically you're going to want to emphasize attack you're going to want to emphasize some speed you're going to put a little crit rate because you don't need too much you're going to put um crit damage galore and then you're going to put some really good accuracy so you can put these debuffs and we're going to talk about his kit in a little bit afterwards then after that, we did crit damage as the main stat for the gloves. Really good. It sucks that it's a four star. I would really like to change this sometime soon. Uh, we did get crit rate as a substat, which is cool. We got some speed. This defense sucks and this attack sucks. I'm not going to lie. If uh, it was attack percentage, awesome. Uh, if there was accuracy here, it would have been awesome. If it was, uh, you know, th those kinds of things are the things that I really do look out when it comes to specifically doing a crazy snipe set. 
uh, this really helps with that. So now if we go into the chest, the chest obviously because he is a sniping character that does a lot of damage output, you're going to want to go attack percentage. Attack percentage, then we did get accuracy, which is cool. They, they're they obviously going to give us a flat stat of attack if you have the main stat as percentage. So that's not bad in this type of sense, so to speak. Uh, if you did get a different type of percentage stat, like, you know, if you did get a little defense, that would have been really nice here too. Uh, I would I would have preferred that. I would have preferred some maybe crit damage, something, but it is what it is. Uh, we're making do with what we can at this point. Then there's crit rate, which is good, and then we did get a little HP, which HP never hurts. So then we go finally into the boots here. You're going to want to go speed. Then we went crit rate 11%, really good, which is contributing to this right now. Then uh, we got a crappy defense flat stat. We did get HP and we did get crit damage, which is really good. So now let's look at the accessories really quick, guys. It's a four-star item for sure, but if you look at the stats that we did get here, we did get attack percentage, which is really good. We did have low HP, so I did kind of put this as the main stat to help him get a little afloat. Uh, and then they had regular attack flat here, and then we had HP percent here to also contribute to helping out there. Now, if we go into, like, I would have liked just to kind of, if we're doing an assessment here, it would have been nice if we had a defense percentage here, you know, something like that. That would have been really great, uh, but that's one of those things where you kind of take the best pieces that you can get, especially after we were talking about the priorities of what we want, which is really attack speed crazy crit damage accuracy fill up the crit rate up to a decent amount so you're good and then you could do some defense to kind of help him be a little bit more tankier but if you're trying to go for a straight nuke or if you know your composition is not going to really uh hit him too much in that sense it could really help out in that in that respect so then the next thing we went is for uh the amulet which we're gonna obviously go for crit damage percentage it's the thing by far when it comes to damage output that will help you uh really get far ahead accuracy incredible we got 21 here resistance 26 to kind of give us a little more just in case we wanted to resist some things we did get some defense and attack overall it kind of like really helped a little bit with this with these stats you you get the flat rates or whatever which it is what it is i i definitely do i can't complain about this uh this neck piece at all it's pretty decent for the most part and i'm really content with it and then finally for the banner guys because he's doing debuffs you're going to go for accuracy as the f the the main stat here we got attack up to 11 percent here really good really good stuff here we got attack as a flat which just contributes to it if we did get another percentage that would have been pretty cool but i'm, I'm content with it speed at nine and then we glyphed it defense at five percent not bad here so that's the overall pieces we got. Not the best pieces in the world, but they are pretty decent. I I'm, I can't complain when it comes to this Bellinor. This Bellinor is not too shabby for the time being. Eventually down the road, we will get better gear, but most likely we'll also get other characters that we will put the better gear on. For now, for where we are, it's really it's really nice. So let's talk about his kit with uh with his skills because i know that's one thing that you guys are very interested in and we're gonna go into it right now we obviously talked about the the passive aura that he has with clan boss as a lead that is really incredible so i definitely do love that when it comes to uh the a1 where he attacks and he puts a 30 percent increased crit rate absolutely amazing guys now this is a really good one for clearing trash this is un insurmountable, in uh, I'm so bad, insurmountable, and this places a 60% 60 60 decreased defense and 25% weaken. He does this before his attack, guys. So he debuffs, then he hits them with it. So what that is saying is the enemy that's going to get hit by this, not only at that time can they not remove it, they just have to eat that damage completely. So that's why he's such a good sniper because he doesn't need anyone else to really help him take something out. If someone else gives him an attack up before he does this and he, he, he applies the weaken and defense down, like they get literally wrecked. So that's why he's a good sniper and you pump a lot of crit damage and attack because he can basically annihilate something. It's really good. So if we go here uh, and then he says, uh, 
places one attack, then attacks them. Places an increase 60% defense buff on him for two turns if he kills the enemy. So this is really good for essentially uh, trash mobs because it kind of helps him live if he does snipe the person. So you get a 60% defense increase based on that stat, which is really awesome, guys. Absolutely really awesome when it comes to this. So not only does he really do like a snipe, if he kills the target while he's clearing trash, he basically gets a protection thing on him. Now, if we go to the next one, and this is why it's contention on uh, essentially not having lifesteal, but because I'm doing clan boss, I am having lifesteal. So that's why I'm saying there's different options in this case that you can kind of take if you don't want to have lifesteal because of this overkill. Now, this overkill attacks one enemy and will heal this champion equal to any surplus damage if the target is killed. So basically, whatever overflow damage he does, he just basically heals himself. It's like a heal nuke uh, every three turns. It's it's pretty nuts. So because you're obviously not killing the clan boss when you're fighting him, unless you're the last person attacking him, overkill really doesn't help you in that sense. So that's why I have lifesteal. But if I say he wasn't part of my clan boss team, and I just wanted to go to straight damage to basically snipe someone and then heal myself you can do that too guys so like it really depends on where you're going with him i'm using him across the board so lifesteal is a beneficial thing for me at the time of if i do decide to change him out of my clan boss team and just say yo we're gonna do dungeons or we're gonna do arena and stuff like that i'd probably go crazy damage with him to to ensure that the snipe does happen, and then he does an overkill and heals himself up. So that, those are the kind of the things that you want to think about. And then maybe maybe we'll stack some defense on it. Or we could probably do something even crazier where maybe a, a, a defensive set just to kind of make him survive a little bit. And then maybe a speed set. And then after that, you could basically, like, it'll help him maybe live a little longer to the point that when overkill does happen... It just it just works. So it's it's one of those things on how you want to take it, guys. It's really good. You can do a lot of things with him. His kit is overall really incredible. Uh, we don't have Xavier, but let's talk about this. He does have this move that if Xavier was on the same team, which is another character, if you wanted to take a, a, a look at that character really quick, it's not... I think it's Dark Elves that she's in. Uh, if this chick was another Lego force, uh, if she was on the team... Essentially, this is what he would get. It's uh, basically he he does debuffs galore. It's the craziest thing ever. We we don't have her. If we pull her, oh man, that'd be so incredible. Attacks one enemy, places a five percent poison debuff. Amazing for clan boss. A fifty percent decrease attack def debuff. A thirty percent decrease speed debuff, and a fifty percent decrease accuracy debuff for two turns. Only available when Xavier is on the team. If I was able to get Xavier on the team, this would cover so much ground on my team, and it would basically this would this would solidify my what, a member on my clan boss team because they cover so many things that I wouldn't need to worry about anymore, and I do love that. So my Jerang would be replaced because Jerang is doing attack down, defense down, but he does defense down weekend, and then he would also do this. So. It's definitely something to think about. Oh, man, I, I, I would so love to have Xavier. They would be absolutely incredible. But since we don't, <laughs> we're going to ignore that part now. Let's take a look at the masteries really quick, guys. So uh, I'm going to kind of keep the camera here where it is. And we're just going to take a look at what the mastery is. Obviously, we went down the offensive set. You could take a screen cap of what this is. But basically, we went all the way down to War Master. Increasing multiple hits with the default skill goes up to 10%. Uh, definitely helps when doing damage to, for each enemy killed, and it can stack up to uh, X amount of percent, which is really nice. This is also uh, good when you're dealing with dungeon bosses and stuff like that, which I do love, and so on and so forth. And then over here, we for the support side, we went to accuracy. Basically, increased accuracy, more accuracy when no cooldowns, increased accuracy for each enemy alive, 16. Then we have uh, decreases the target turn meter on the hit. Uh, and then we have the chance to increase our debuffs uh, when we do defense down and weaken, which is really nice. So that's kind of the, the route that we went with Bellinor. Really good uh, kind of thing here. I do love that. 
Uh, there are some things where you can do really cool things to in, in the sense of if you wanted it to make him a little more tankier, you can go into Blood Shield because you know you're going to kill something. And then basically he would also get a 15% HP uh, thing, but it's one of the things because he has low HP, 15% um, isn't as much as the other characters. It's not low, low, but it's like... It's, it's, I mean, it, it would help, but it's, it's one of those things you can do if you're trying to mess around with trying to make a tanky or Bellinor instead of doing something like this, because you want him to live longer in that case. Uh, and, and it kind of, it can make sense. It can make sense for sure. So there, there's a few ways you could play with, play around with him. He, he's a, not a cookie cutter cutter type build, but you can do some cool things just for your character, depending on how you want to play with Bellinor. So guys, that was basically artifacts, skills, and masteries. So the next thing that I do want to talk about, or at least I want to show, is this video where basically I'm going to put a, the full video on a separate thing, but I'm going to show you guys. So I'm just going to give you a quick brief overview of what it is about because a lot of people are like, okay, so what can you use Bellinor with? Uh, I use Bellinor for Dragon. We'll run that afterwards. I use Bellinor for Clan Boss. Well, actually, why don't we do that really quick? We, we, I'll show you with, uh, with Clan Boss, but yeah, I'll show you Clan Boss. I'll show you Spider 20, which I have a video that I'm gonna, I'm gonna basically slide to so you guys can see where I died doing Spider 20 because I had Scar Torsus. I called an audible on having Bellinor there as the lead, and then we took Spider 20. We did 19 and 20 on the same day and 20 was done in like three minutes really awesome stuff the fact that we passed that wall i'm gonna do a separate spider video but i'm gonna show that part uh but let's do clan boss unfortunately guys okay so we have an hour and seven to kind of use these keys unfortunately uh they they kind of went hard on brutal did let's see you see, Brutal, we already kind of went for the cap on. We did Nightmare already. Hard would be the next thing because I definitely do want to get a treasure chest out of it. And I did I did actually purchase for this video, guys, because I want to show you the content. I did purchase um, what is called keys. So we're going to use these keys. That's how much I love you guys. You definitely like the video if, uh, if you really appreciate the fact that I dropped some cash so we could do this video and see what Clan Boss looks like. So... Yeah, we already did Brutal, and we're kind of already at the 23 mil, so it's one of those things where, yeah, we're already over that. I don't want to waste a key. We did Nightmare already. We're just going to do Hard really quick just to get another chest. So let's do it right now, guys. Obviously, you see Bellinor is the lead, which is the increased ally crit rate in all battles by 24. Let's have some fun with this. And... I'm going to shift my camera back up. There we go. Sorry if the audio went muted. It's just because I'm switching away from the game. But the damage output he does, like 100 and... He, he goes up to like 200k on crits. I've seen him do it. If there's a weak and applied, guys, we're going to look at that in a bit. 135 with the 84 on Warmaster. Really awesome damage that he really does pump. My boy Bellinor got stunned. It is what it is. 101 on his A1. 101k on his A1. Really good damage, guys. And like I said, our Bellinor isn't even greatly geared. He's pretty he's he's geared pretty good, but it's not great. I would love to have better gear. There we go. He pumps a lot of damage. Imagine if we had Xavier on the team. If we had Xavier on the team instead of Jerang, oh man, the extra damage output he would do from poisons. That would be insane. We might we would probably we would probably not need Kale anymore or something like that. I'll have to read the skill set again, but the fact that it does so many debuffs and a 5% poison, it's uh it's pretty good, but it's still a four turn, you know what I mean? So But I definitely do love having Bellinor on my team. It's really legit. After this, we'll do a, I'll do a quick dragon run. I've done the quick I've done the dragon run 
on the M Madame Ceres video. So if you guys wanted to see that as well, that is another video guide we did the other day. I know you guys would absolutely love it. Check it out. Definitely be sure. And also, guys, um, while we're doing these videos, definitely let me know in the comments. Uh, one, how do you build your Bellinor if you do have a Bellinor? Uh, let me know your thoughts and who you want to see next. Uh, if I have the character available, I will definitely love to make a video, guys, on... Uh, on champions i'm kind of playing around with some other champions because i definitely do love making these videos for you guys but if there's like a video that you guys are like you know what i would really love it if you did a video on this character like say spirit host like a, a free-to-play character uh you know those things like and the the comment that gets the most likes i'll do it i definitely don't mind doing it all right damage is starting to get a little intense our boy bellinor is getting hit with the thunder and uh and that's where that's one of those things where yeah in clan boss he would he he's eaten a lot of damage so it would be nice if we eventually like yeah if if we had an unkillable team awesome but if i were to work with what i have right now if i if i ever did get a xavier i'd probably replace Jerang and then maybe i would replace kale and potentially put someone that has 60 percent defense increase for the entire team to kind of help us sustain a little bit better if we had a counter attack, oh, I would love to have like a skull crusher. I would love it. But we're still able to do decent damage, which I really do like for the most part. Okay, we're getting there. 151k on that hit. 106k. Our boy Apoth is down. My boy got slammed with the button ups right now. We got three people remaining. Kale, coming back from life, came back to life like an Evanescence song, and they're down. So we did like 15.5 damage, but if we kind of look at where Bellinor is, really good overall, especially with what his damage is. He did almost 5 million damage, which is really good. Uh, Kale obviously has the one up because of poisons. Uh, th that's fine. Um, and then, you know, everyone else kind of falls suit. Jerang is really low because I still didn't... I don't have a Lizard Man accuracy banner. It drives me insane. If he did have... If I did have an accuracy banner, I would switch out of Eagle Eye into, like, War Master. I would. Like, in a heartbeat. I wouldn't mind. But uh, right now, we're just eating it because of it. But that would increase our damage output as well. So, not bad for Bellinor. Pretty good. Uh, now, if we go... And I'm not, I don't want to use another key for that because, yeah, that would be kind of messed up. I'm going to try to see if I can wait potentially to, to see if I could do some more damage later on. So, so before I go into that spider video, guys, that spider video is what you guys are going to love because, like, a lot of people always wonder, yo, spider 20, um, how do you do it? And we just did it last week and it was a really cool, I just, I think it's absolutely amazing. So let's do dragon really quick. And we're going to go here. And this is the team that I run for Dragon. And it's a heavy support team, but basically Bellinor carries the damage output. And it works. So let's get right into it, guys. There we go. So you saw how, we saw how Clan Boss, how he was with Clan Boss. Let's, uh, can we spread this out? Yeah, there we go. For some reason, I feel like when we're doing Dragon, he, the, the screen is like so zoomed in on these characters. They make it significantly um, closer. So it's a little scary with Bellinor when he has a defense down. It is a little scary. There we go. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're doing damage. But this is the thing. This is why I love Miscreated Monster. Because of that shield. That shield really keeps him safe. I want to see if I could change the camera a little bit so we could see more of how uh, Bellower is doing. But that looks so weird when you zoom out like that, doesn't it? But at least we could see his health pool in this sense. I'm going to switch it up, guys. There we go. The buffs just hide everything. It's like you can't even see what's going on. There's just so many buffs. <laughs> it's just like, what the hell? <laughs> All these boxes. One thing I've been I was I've been mentioning on the streams, especially when we're doing a lot of manual stuff, like say like arena or like if like 
when we did Spider 19 and it was a wall, uh, it was 20 minutes long, fam. It took 20 minutes. All right, here. This is where we're going to see the output. So, obviously, defense down and weakened right off the bat. Look how much damage he did. I got to really uh, drop my head. Yeah, there we go. So, now you guys can see what, what the health pool looks like. He does really good stuff when it. They might get the hit on this. We're going to see. Nope. There we go. Good damage by Bellinor. Really holding it down. But he does... He takes away so much chunks of health. And... Again, I'm just going to emphasize it. Miscreated Monster and Madame Ceres are arena build. They're arena build, so they don't, they're not down the, the offense tree to do War Master just to pop a little more damage. They're really just basically defense and support for utility, and it helps them. It helps me so much in arena. But they do not contribute to the damage when we're doing Dragon. That's one of those things where basically Bellinor has to carry the team. Scar Torsis, I had to go down the offensive tree because there is a bulwark glitch with miscreated monster, which I could put a video. Look at that. He doesn't like we we take him out before he gets to do that uh that you know standing attack, which does so much damage and stuns everyone. And this is where we're gonna basically wrap it up, and then we're gonna see the stats there. And then finally, I'll take it uh, to the... I could actually shift my camera back up in a second once we finish and do the assessment. But we'll, I'll show you the Spider uh, 20 where we messed up and then we uh, we basically did the audible to bring Bellinor in. So what did we get as an item here? Attack 8%. Eh. I mean, it's a 5-star. It does have resist. No, nah, I'm selling that. Yeah, so... If we look at what the HP is overall, I'm going to put this here, guys. He did 1.6 million uh, compared to the entire team here. Bellinor is really awesome for carrying us. He literally is carrying us in Dragon's Lair when it comes to things like damage output and, and applying the defense in the weekend. He is such a strong player when it comes to that. Uh, I wish... I had a good arena composition to show you, but I kind of really don't. I've actually been... Uh, contemplating on messing a bit with potentially who's the other character Zargala with Bellinor where he would go first and then if uh, the cleanup didn't happen Zargala would go to do the A2 to finish it off on a sweep and then do cracked armor to to basically destroy everyone uh, it would be so legit I, but I would have to work on the gear in order for that to happen, and then I would have to take him out of his lifesteal gear, which is what I'm using him for, but, and we had the discussion already on the video. So, now I'm going to give the sign out, guys, because I'm going to basically end the video by showing this Spider uh, 20 takedown on what we did. But, yo, guys, thank you guys so much for the love and support. If it's your first time here, definitely be sure to hit, 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 hit that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, let me know what you guys think. Let me know who you guys want to see next. Yo, check out this spider video that we did because I recorded it because it was the coolest thing. The fact that we finally did Spider 20, it was such a break through for us. I absolutely love it. Now the only thing we have to do is Fire Knight. So we have we have Dragon 20, we have Ice Golem 20, and uh, basically, you know, now we we did Spider 20, and Fire Knight is the last thing in regards to farming, and then we are good to go. So check out this video, this other video part, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it, and I will catch you guys next time. <laughs> wow. All right, let's look at Veil. Vale. Let's see if we can put it on ourselves. Bitch, put it on herself. Respect. So the trick would be like, yo. Oh, no. She still has Veil, vale, but it bugged like she was out of it. What's up, John Perro? We're doing Spider 20 right now, seeing what we can do here. Look at this shit. Nice. Now they're going for Scar Scar. Why would you do a rebirth, you piece of shit? Yo, you selfish fuck. Scar Torsis is so selfish. So selfish? Pack up some accuracy cruel set, speed set on Xavier? I'm not sure. That's a good question. Oh, shit. Scar couldn't handle it. He felt the wrath of the Ginyu Force. Alright. So that's why she was doing it. Leader and trash. Hmm. 
All right, so my thoughts. My thoughts. My thoughts on this. Yo, check this out, fam. Check this out. You want to see how sexy ret sexy and retarded we're about to be on this shit? You want to see how retarded we're about to be on this shit? Let's check it out. Yo, run this shit. Run this shit, bro. Run it. Run it. Please. Please run it, son. Yes. I highly doubt this is going to work, though. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt this is going to work. Oh, man. Yo, can we do this? Like, we're going to get... She's going to get a heal off. I get that. But it's really all about... Can we just nuke it enough before the shields start, not, start weighing down? Ally protect. Good shit. So my hopes... My hopes are essentially the fact that... Good shit. Okay. Yo, can we get a li another lightning? Another lightning. Good decrease turn meter. Good heal. Oh shit, it's dissipating. We need lightning. Lightning in a bottle needs to hit. There we go. Now, the boss's fucking thing is what's gonna make it ridiculous. That's bullshit. Okay. If we get a, eventually a Heart Seeker, not now, but if she does it, I'm going to be pissed. But if we get a Heart Seeker near the end, that would be straight sex. Yeah, and then that would be Spider 20 as well. We, w we basically would pass two walls. And then you guys would understand why I did Great Hall the way I did Great Hall. But I don't think we're going to get it in time. I don't think we can get in time. Oh, speed legs! Heart seeker? Heart seeker? Heart seeker reset! Oh shit! Fam! Fam, we about to get this. We about to get this money. We about to be caking in that guap. Cheddar Bob Backlin. Hit him with the thunder. Get it! Spider 20 down. Spider 20 down. The. Yo, the audible play from getting Scar Torsis out, bringing in Bellinor, making sure that that crit is there for Cold Heart with crit damage just having that gear. Mmm. 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 Beautiful stuff right there, guys. Beautiful stuff. Did the con concoction of Infernal Baroness, Miscreated Monster, Cold Heart, Silar, and Bellinor. What I'm gonna do... Let's fucking go. Fatty team. Infernal Baroness for the 5% heal on A1. Blizzard men defense. God damn it. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Again, if this is your first time here and you're watching from YouTube, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button. If you ever come to Twitch, definitely be sure to hit that follow button. Come join us on Discord. The link is below in the YouTube description. Also, last but not least, I want to say major, major, major shout outs to the sponsors. If you guys also wanted to financially support the stream, definitely be sure to check out that YouTube description below. There is a Patreon link. And if you can't support financially, don't worry, guys. There's other ways you can actually show support. That's getting the word out, sharing the content, letting friends and loved ones know.
about this uh, this channel. Tell them to come and hang out. Come join us on Discord. You will not regret it. It's the best community slash family ever. It says it right there on the freaking board. Yo, thank you guys so much for hanging out. I love you guys so much, and I will catch you guys next time. Let me know in the comments below what you would like to see next, what you think about the video, and so on. I'll catch you guys next time. See ya.